What's going on everyone? My name is Evan Jevnikar and I'm the Daily Dino Guy. In this video, we're going to be going over another new batch of dinosaurs that have been found in 2024. Personally, I think these dinosaurs are some of the coolest dinosaurs that have been described this year so far. So I'm super excited to go more in depth on these ones. We're going to be looking at six of these brand new dinosaurs. Make sure you let me know in the comments which of these dinosaurs you think is your favorite. First up on this list is Diukin, a raptor that would have lived in Argentina 86 million years ago. This dinosaur would have been roughly 11 feet long, or 3.5 meters. Diokin was specifically an Inulegin raptor, which translates to half-bird. They're called half-bird raptors because they share many of the classic features that make up a raptor, like the curved foot claw, the feet that are perfectly designed for gripping, and the small, thin skull. But they had shoulder and hip bones that looked almost identical to birds. These raptors are also different from other types of raptors because they have long snouts that are filled with cone-shaped teeth, sort of like a crocodile. It's hypothesized that Diokin and other half-bird raptors would have used these cone-shaped teeth to snatch up fish out of the water, since they were really good at holding struggling prey. Diokin is a really interesting half-bird because it represents a missing link in their evolutionary history. The earliest of these raptors was Buitra raptor, which was only about the size of a coyote and lived about 98 million years ago in Argentina. And the latest half-bird raptor was Ostraraptor, which lived about 72 million years ago and was the size of a grizzly bear. Diokin seems to be a midpoint in these raptors' evolution that shows a steady increase in body size over 26 million years. What's also interesting about Diokin is that the original skeleton had large bite marks in it from some other animal. Based on the other fossils from the area, it may have come from a megaraptor. But these bite marks are also cone-shaped, so Diokin may have been preyed upon by a crocodile or an even bigger Diokin individual. Next up on the list is Lokiceratops, which was a ceratopsian that lived in Montana 78 million years ago. Lokiceratops was about 22 feet long, or 6.7 meters. This dinosaur was specifically a centrosaur, which are horned dinosaurs that include Styracosaurus, Centrosaurus, Pachyrhinosaurus, but not Triceratops. And Lokiceratops was one of the biggest centrosaurs to ever exist, second only to the Canadian species of Pachyrhinosaurus. Lokiceratops also had one of the most ornate skulls ever. It had two massive curved horns coming out the side of its frill, which is why the authors named it Lokiceratops. These curved horns resemble the curved blades of the god of mischief. It had two eyebrow horns, but instead of having a nose horn, it likely had a small keratinous bump. What's interesting about Lokiceratops is that it lived alongside four other horned dinosaurs all at the same time. These would have been Wendyceratops, Judiceratops, Medusaceratops, and Albertaceratops. What's more, there are also multiple pockets in North America, both to the north and south, filled with multiple giant plant eaters. While it's quite normal to have several large plant eating dinosaurs in the same environment, it's very strange to have this many closely related plant eaters all in the same environment. The paleontologists who found Lokiceratops think that this might be due to mountain building and ocean building events happening during this time. When a population of animals is separated by either a mountain or a body of water, over time, they eventually evolve into separate species. The more the original population is separated, the more unique species you get. In biology, this is called vicariance. Therefore, as horned dinosaurs got separated by the building of mountain ranges and the opening up of internal seaways, they got separated and rapidly evolved into new species. Another dinosaur found this year was Bayinosaurus, which was a stegosaur that lived in China 168 million years ago. Bayinosaurus would have been about 16 feet long, or five meters. This dinosaur was an early stegosaur, and as such, it would have been slightly different from the iconic stegosaurus that we all know and love. It would have been slightly smaller, the plates on its back would have been smaller and thinner, and it might have had a giant spike on its shoulder. However, the biggest difference between it and Stegosaurus was its skull. Stegosaurus had a long, narrow skull, while Bayanosaurus had a short and wide skull. The width is actually similar to some of the early armored dinosaurs. Usually, wider skulls translate to stronger jaw muscles, which helps an animal eat different types of food. This wider skull suggests that early Stegosaurus like Bayanosaurus probably had a generalist diet. By the time Stegosaurus evolved, these dinosaurs likely evolved a more specialized diet for softer plant material. So it seems Stegosaurus evolved to be a picky eater. Fauna is another dinosaur that was found this year, and it lived in Utah 99 million years ago. It would have been about 8 feet or 2.5 meters long, 
and it only would have weighed about 70 pounds or 36 kilograms. Several partial skeletons of fauna have been found all over Utah, making it one of the most well-known small dinosaurs in North America. Because it's so complete, we know that this little guy was a Thesalosaur, which were small, beaked dinosaurs that were about the size of a large dog. Fauna was found to be a close relative of another dinosaur called Erictodromius. Now what's interesting about Erictodromius is that we know that it was a burrowing dinosaur. And the authors that found Fauna think that this dinosaur also burrowed. But how do we know that Fauna burrowed just like its cousin? When they looked at the arms, they found that this small dinosaur had massive muscle attachments on its arms and shoulders. Specifically, its triceps and deltoids were bigger than any other dinosaur of the same size, which is common for animals that burrow. For example, armadillos also have really powerful arm and shoulder muscles, which helps them dig. But that's not all. Two nearly complete skeletons of fauna were found right next to each other. Because these skeletons were so well preserved and they were so close to each other when they were found, it's hypothesized that these dinosaurs were already underground when they died. So it seems pretty clear that fauna burrowed, but what for? Well, because several specimens have been found together in these burrows, it seems that they use these burrows to care for their families. But as one of the earliest thesalosaurs, it also lived alongside two dangerous predators. The first being Siats, an apex predator, and the biggest predator in its environment. The second would have been Moros, an early relative of T-Rex, believe it or not. While it wasn't as powerful as its distant relative, its small body and its long legs would have made it an extremely agile predator and a very dangerous threat. Not only did burrowing help them care for their families, but it also could have been used to protect them from these dangerous predators. Moving along, we have Comptonatus, which lived in England 127 million years ago. It was about 23 feet long, or seven meters. This dinosaur was actually a close relative of a guanodon. It would have walked on all fours, had a beaked mouth, and it would have had a thumb spike to protect itself from predators. This dinosaur is special because it reveals how diverse English and other European dinosaurs were at this time. Recently, several new species of iguanodont dinosaurs, like Comptonatus, have been found in England and Europe. For the longest time, it was thought that these types of dinosaurs were relatively rare during this time period. But with the addition of Comptonatus, it seems that Europe was teeming with iguanodont dinosaurs during the early Cretaceous. Another interesting fact about Comptonatus was that they were able to find out how old this individual was. By cutting open the rib bones, they were able to see the growth marks in it. Just like tree rings, they were able to count up these rings and they found that this individual would have been about five or six years old. It was likely a subadult, and the authors think that at this point in its growth, it would have been able to reproduce. Comptonatus at this age would have been estimated to weigh about 3,600 pounds, or 1,600 kilograms. That would mean this dinosaur would grow at an average rate of 654 pounds, or 290 kilograms a year. That is a crazy growth rate. So as you can see, this dinosaur was an interesting animal and was able to tell us a few things about dinosaur biology. Hiranodraco is our next dinosaur, and it was a small raptor-like dinosaur that lived in Mongolia 72 million years ago. This dinosaur would have been about three feet long, or one meter, and it only would have weighed about 14 ounces, or 400 grams. Hiranodraco was part of a group of dinosaurs called Trudontids. These dinosaurs would have been very similar to dromaeosaurs like Velociraptor, except for three key differences. One is that they were very thin compared to other raptors. They had a smaller curved claw on their foot and they had specialized teeth with large serrations on them. Hiranodraco is a special dinosaur because it's a missing link in Mongolian trudontids. Mongolia in the late Cretaceous had quite a few trudontid species and they've been found to live here for millions of years, except there seemed to be a gap around 72 million years ago. But thanks to Hiranodraco, we know that these dinosaurs were always in Mongolia and they didn't migrate away for a short period of time. Hiranodraco also had really long legs for a trudontid. Its foot bones in particular were proportionally longer than any other trudontid, dromaeosaur, ornithomimid, or modern flightless bird. Having long foot bones, especially when they're this long, is a dead giveaway that this dinosaur was very fast. Based on similarly sized dinosaurs, it probably could run about 12 miles per hour, or 19 kilometers per hour, which is pretty fast for such a small dinosaur. A lot of evidence has come out recently that trudontids probably hunted early mammals. So Hiranodraco probably used these long legs to hunt down the tiny Nemexbatar and Catopsbatar. Well, that's all six dinosaurs. Tune in next time where we discuss the other dinosaurs that have been found this year. And spoiler alert, one of them is a new relative of T-Rex, so you won't want to miss it. This video couldn't be possible without my daily Dino Direct members. 
Thank you so much for your support and passion for paleontology. Because of you, this channel is able to put out videos that are as understandable and accessible as possible. If you want to help support this channel and take your dinosaur knowledge to the next level, then you should consider joining Daily Dino Direct. You'll get access to bonus videos, Q&A sessions, and masterclass lectures. Plus, you'll be a part of a community that shares your passions for dinosaurs, paleontology, and science. And as an added bonus, if you go to my website and sign up, I'll even let you try it out absolutely free just to make sure that you love it. If you made it this far into the video, then you probably love dinosaurs as much as I do. If that's true, then you should subscribe to my newsletter. Every month I gather all the cutting edge research on dinosaurs and I send it to you absolutely free. If you'd like to read that newsletter, go to my website and sign up. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss another video discussing the newest research. And don't forget to check out Daily Dino Guy on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook so you never miss another dinosaur fact. Until next time, keep exploring the ancient past with me, Daily Dino Guy.